I have lost the ability to speak. I'm just going to answer with... <laughs> Start the game already! Well, let's hey. switch things up. What are you drinking? Uh, summer's be pear this time around. Oh, you actually switched. I'm going to be very boring. It's exactly the same as before. It's the same bottle I've already uncorked. So I can't well, see, if do you that. don't call attention to it, because you're not going to listen to this one the same day, they would never know. Talking about it, people are going to wait until we have like a whole season's worth, and then you're just going to binge it in one night. By the time we get that far, I'm going to delete all of our early episodes. <laughs> no, no, you just put them behind a Patreon wall. Yeah. You must pay us a million dollars to listen to our crap. <laughs> could you could you imagine charging people to just eavesdrop on us having conversations? Uh, yes. <laughs> I don't know. Like, don't get me but wrong. I, I get it for professional shows, like shows that, you know, they, they have a budget. They've got people that handle editing. They actually have talent yeah, and charisma. That's... Yeah, there's there's a big there's a you big know, difference. I kind of kind of get it, but like the whole excuse for doing this show is that, man, I haven't talked to Talson in like six months. You know, particularly once like our D and D games went on hiatus, it's like I just I don't get that nerd conversation anymore. The nerds and, are it's funny, you know, because nerds are are more popular and more socially acceptable than we've ever been, and for some reason, there's just still not a lot of us. Well, there's nerds. Like, there's a lot of nerds. I shouldn't say that I don't get that nerd conversation. Like, all my coworkers are nerds of one flavor or another. But, like, there's nerds. And then there's, like, those nerds that you've been in the trenches with. Like, it's true. We, we've got foxholes. Yes. We've got all kinds of holes that we've been in together. <laughs> yeah, there's holes that have had hot dogs thrown down them. <laughs> <laughs> don't you fart on air <laughs> uh, can you tell that this is the second episode of the night when we've already been drinking it's true so ah. this sounds like a wonderful time to have the official nerding under the influence star wars episode so at the so, time of recording Ahsoka episode one and two is aired. You've watched both of them now, yeah? I have, but I, what, what I really want to talk about is the Star Wars holiday special. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Oh, come on. No, if you want to talk about the Star Wars holiday special, go watch Red Letter Media's take on it. It's awesome. The, the second take on it, because the first one isn't actually a take on it. No, I, I think the first one's even better, honestly. <laughs> I think the first one is the better one, where they don't talk about the thing at all, other than by name. <laughs> they don't uh, show any clips. They don't actually discuss what happens. They don't, they don't talk about the history around it or any of that. They literally just go, it's somebody mentions the thing, and then they go off on a tangent, and they talk about that for a while. And it's brilliant. It is, in fact, I think, the inspiration for this show. <laughs> i will say that you actually have to watch the holiday special don't watch it sober don't watch it alone like Do that's not cruel, watch it alone cruel and unusual punishment but like on a night where you're you're you know you're feeling it if you've, you've lubricated things a little bit you're in a good mood watch Maybe you have to break it up into pieces, but watch some of the Star Wars holiday special and then talk about it afterwards. Talk oh. about the why. Money. It's all about money. It's 100% cash. Cash and Coke. More Coke than cash, I think. Oh, I think there was some cash involved in the Coke. <laughs> it's terrible. It's truly, truly awful. Did we right. have the conversation about whether you're allowed to call yourself a nerd if you haven't seen the Star Wars holiday special? You know what? I, I think it's. Unless you are, are going out of your way to look through official sources to find it, it's actually very difficult to find. 
It's available like, on YouTube now. There's a good cut on YouTube. Yeah. So, uh, you know, watch that. I, I suppose the the legality of it is gray oh, if you haven't no. bought it. But I know that they, like, tried to basically, like, burn all evidence that the thing ever existed at one point. So a lot oh, yeah. of the, the, the archived footage that was available, at least as of, like, 10 years ago, was stuff that had already been through, like, multiple generations of shitty VHS copies and... I haven't actually seen what's available on YouTube. Maybe it's a little bit better, but. Yeah, I mean, it's still crappy. I mean, it was the 70s. All right. I don't want to talk about the holiday special anymore, but I do want to talk about Star Wars in general. And and the basic setup, I guess, is that we have not. Uh, we tried to start a podcast, what, 700 years ago. Oh, my God. I forgot it was, about that. was as just after the force awakens came out so this is the first of the new trilogy movies and we had differing opinions on it then and like infinite star wars has happened since then and i don't think we've really talked about any of it maybe a little bit about the mandalorian but yeah. that's about it so i would like to sort of briefly talk about like our opinions on the old Star Wars that everybody knows. Talk about the newer Star Wars that we've experienced, uh, particularly since we last talked about this. And now that we know that there's going to be new Star Wars, and it's going to be new in quotation marks, Yeah, how do you feel about that, what we hope for it? Um, oh well okay so here's the here's my first question to you have you seen the first two episodes of ahsoka i have um i think i i i'm i I, it's too early to say that star wars has turned a corner Mm -hmm. but there are some things about specifically about and oh my god i always forget her name rosario dawson Mm -hmm. um like i enjoy her as an actor i think I think she brings a lot of talent, a lot of charisma. And it's funny, right? Because when you think about uh, like Jedi, they're supposed to be, you know, I'm, I have no emotions and all of that, but all of the, like, she's so good at uh, expressing things with subtlety that doesn't look like she's actually feeling anything. But at the same time, it's like, I completely understand what Mm -hmm. she's expressing here. Um, Now uh, we should probably explain that we're coming at this from a couple of different angles. Neither one of us have watched the full animated catalog. No, that was something I wanted to bring up to you because there's a lot of backstory for this particular character. I have, I have watched the first two or three episodes, I think of the Clone Wars cartoon. Okay. So I, I have seen like the cartoon introduction of Ahsoka. Did you see the movie introduction movie cartoon? Nope. Like baby hut, like very, her first uh, introduction. You mean, you mean in the Mandalorian? No, no. Her, her, so there was a, a movie, the animated movie, star Wars, the clone wars. And then the sequel just kind of picked up from that. Now, oh. if I want to be really nerdy about this, oh, there's a, do. there's a non canon. I would consider it superior because it wasn't so for children. Uh, Cartoon Network in 2003, I think there was three seasons of it, maybe. Uh, they had a animated Star Wars, the Clone Wars series that was essentially supplanted. It, it had a little bit narrower scope and, and you know less characters. It was sort of a tighter thing, more interesting animation style. It, it doesn't really matter for this discussion other than, hey, if you're into that kind of shit, check it out. Uh, I believe it was available in the U.S., certainly, but uh, it, like, was syndicated here in Canada on our cartoon networks and Teletoon and stuff for, like, ever. So I actually have Teletoon uh, through my Prime subscription, so I, I should mm-hmm. check that out and see if I've got it. Yeah, I don't know. I imagine it's kind of like a, a, a Netflix Marvel thing where it's just, like, Disney owns the rights to all of this shit now, so, like... Either you make it available on Disney Plus or it doesn't exist. 
Oh, maybe. If it can't be found in the Jedi archives, it simply doesn't exist. Oh, yeah. This is one of those things about general fiction that I have a big problem with, where people will write something that's interesting, and there's all kinds of speculation about where it came from and how it works. And, and that's great, and it's awesome, mm -hmm. and you can build on that. And then they come out with a sequel or a prequel, and they explain everything, and now it's ruined. Mm -hmm. Midichlorians. So I haven't watched all of the animated stuff from end to end, but I think I've probably consumed through clips and whatnot the majority of the important parts. So I understand sort of Ahsoka's general arc leading up to this. I have nothing. So that's and, good, because we have two different angles to approach it from. Yeah, so so without major spoilers, um, she was Anakin's Padawan. Um, so you had, obviously, Anakin and his issues. What? Anakin she was have issues. She was the, the sort of, uh, the idea of take two of these sort of stubborn, strong willed characters and and put them together and hope to get you know something more out of the two of them together she was the annoying kind of side character very very early on and then through clone wars and then in particular her appearances in rebels that character sort of matured she had a falling out with the jedi so she's not actually a jedi um, she turned her back on the order because of some shit that happened. Uh, disagreement of things like what was going down around the Clone Wars. Uh, she was framed for something that happened at the Jedi Temple um, by another Jedi friend of hers. And um, eventually the truth came out. But, you know, the fact that they... Just too late. Yeah, they 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 put her through the ringer she's like fuck this i'm out and it's fair there's a connection to, to anakin's downturn because this is you know between um attack of the clones and and uh revenge of the sith no what the third prequel i'm, I'm mixing yeah. up names now uh, revenge of the sith. sith yeah yeah where this had happened so like it, i mean it retcons the stuff in the movies but part of Anakin's let's call it descent. Yeah. Like, you know, part of his, his, his motivation and, and lack of faith, lost faith uh, in, in the Jedi order. I mean, there was his shit, but you know, it was also what they did to her. Well, yeah, you that wouldn't know that much less bad. It does make the movie less bad, but it is it is a retcon, but a, a good one. So anyway, that's kind of where she comes up into this. Somebody who's who's been trained as a Jedi, had a falling out with the Order, disagreed with what the Order had become at its worst just before it fell. Hashtag there's, Ahsoka was right. There's been speculation about whether, like, they were going to use her to kind of lean more into a gray Jedi kind of thing. And they even hinted at it a little bit, I think, in the, the first or second episode where they're talking about how she got information out of um, <clears throat> the, the Night Sister character. Uh, drawing a blank on her name all of a sudden. The one that was in that episode of The Mandalorian that she was in. Barely, barely remember that. Um, anyway, um, there's an implication there that maybe she used some techniques that would not have been sanctioned by the Jedi to extract that information from her. Read into that how you will. That's probably something that'll have some light shed on it throughout this series. Um, but that's kind of how we got here anyway. Now, I want to make one comment before we get into it. How is it that the first 25 minutes of episode one of Ahsoka was a better Uncharted movie than the Uncharted movie. Oh my God, now I'm drawing a blank on what happened to the first episode. 
the whole, it was kind of an Indiana Jones kind of feel, like her just arriving at that temple and finding her way oh, in and yeah. solving the puzzles to, to find the little map sphere thing, right? I remember that because Cindy made a comment that uh, Rosario Dawson would have made an excellent Tomb Raider. Yeah. And, and I agree, except for one thing. Well, two things, really. Boobs aren't big enough. So that, that was the whole point of Tomb Raider, right? Like Tomb Raider wasn't about raiding tombs. Dude, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, that was the point of the Tomb Raider video game and definitely the point of the Angelina Jolie movies. Yep. Did you watch the uh, the newer Tomb Raider movie that was kind of a... Yeah. Had the feel of the first of the new Tomb Raider games. Uh, Alicia Vikander was in it uh, as Lara Croft. I've, I've seen it. I... I... I don't know. That was at the point of my life where I was I was no longer interested in rich people as the protagonist of anything. That's fair. So, yeah. So I don't I don't I don't enjoy it as much for that reason, right? Like I recognize that a lot of people who are in Hollywood are in that position and it's it's whatever, but just the the idea that hey, I'm super rich and I'm going to gallivant all over the world. Like there are starving children in your hometown. Fix that first. Okay. Anyway, that's that's a whole other podcast topic. So now that we've set up Ahsoka, let's back up just a little bit and go back to the episode uh, 789. We talked about The Force Awakens 19 million years ago. You still have that recording? Because that would be hilarious. Oh, I'm not. Actually, I should say, do you still have it? Because did were you not the one that recorded it? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I know that we shared it back and forth. Let me look because I actually do well, have. Well, let's let's not look for it now because that that's oh, not going to be super entertaining. We probably have it somewhere. Well, anyway, I mean... we 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 talked about the Force Awakens for like two hours, and my recollection of it is that you generally loved it. I liked it, but I I wasn't as won over by the hey, we're just doing a New Hope again. Um, I was totally okay with doing a new hope again. Uh, I've actually grown to like it more in retrospect. Like I've only seen it the once. Mm -hmm. Um, I I've, I've actually, we need to talk about the prequels too, because I, I had a, a great hate on for those when they first came out. Um, and my opinion on those has softened a lot. I think a lot of, a lot of the, a lot of my, my appreciation for, um, a new hope part two um, is that like I'm all grown up now. Right. Like I, I watched star Wars was actually the very first movie that I ever saw. And I was too young to remember it. My parents actually had me in the car at the drive-in in 1977, six, whatever it was. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like three years old. Um, so it's it's like it's ingrained in my sort of cultural background. It's it is my my uh, my backstory, if you will. Mm -hmm. Like if you were to roll me up as a character, like my backstory is I watched Star Wars a lot. Um, I remember watching it over a hundred times when I was in college. Uh, so like looking at it as okay, this is something that. You know, like if I were to go back and, and watch this now as a six year old or as the like a six or seven year old as I was back then, I would love it. Right? Like here's a character who has simple motivations. She's perfectly clear. Like I can tell that she's the good person, right? She is the hero. Um, she does super cool things, she figures stuff out. Cool. It's totally fine. Like, do I do I think that it deserves like uh like Oscars and Emmys and stuff? No, maybe not. But it's good. So my vibe uh, on on the first movie, like it was a promising start. I get if you're going to make a new sequel trilogy, yeah, and you want to respond to years and years and years of criticism about the prequels. I don't hate on them as much as a lot of people do. But I think we, you know, the tendency is to look at it through a different lens. Now, you mentioned an important thing about Star Wars. You watched it as a kid. I don't think that the, broadly speaking, 
the first trilogy was made for kids. It was made for a wide audience. Like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't made for adults. It was made for a wide audience that had things in it that would appeal to a wide audience. Kids loved it. I mean, it was a simpler time, you know, way yeah, back when we, we'd walk 10 miles to school uphill both ways. And, oh, you know, there was one movie in the movie theater and it was there for six months and that's yeah. the movie you watched. Yeah. So it didn't there, take there a were lot fewer to, to please us. There were definitely, <laughs> yeah. But I think where the, the prequels missed for me and I can appreciate like they weren't made for me. They, they, they. I mean, I'm not obviously George Lucas doing a lot of their writing was a big problem. Doing the directing but was worse. There was, they were clearly positioned to be, let's make these kids' movies and then try and add sophistication on top of it so that they're not blatantly kids' movies. And they did that in the most boring way possible. God, it was, yeah, it was caked on with the most obvious broad strokes. Yes. Yeah. And I think going back to The Force Awakens, it made sense to, hey, we get it. We know that George really didn't understand what it was that you loved about Star Wars. Let's throw the member berries at you. Let's let's vibe. Let's recreate that vibe, that sensation of watching A New Hope again yep. as a statement that, like, we get it. And I totally was on board with that. I, I, I was. I understand why they did it. I thought they could have taken a few risks in that movie, but by and large, I liked it. The, the most divisive of the new series uh, would have been The Last Jedi, the middle movie. And I know for a fact that I'm in the minority where I look at that movie of the new trilogy and say, that was the best movie. Oh, yes, you are. But if there's one thing that all the new Star Wars has shown me, and then the third of the, the sequel movies just reaffirmed it, is what Star Wars needs is something new. Yes, agreed. Retreading the same story, the same bad guys, the same everything over and over again. Somehow Palpatine returned. Yeah, let's build a bigger death. Like that that stuff is just done. I'm done. Now I'm not confident that they're going to do new well, and we'll get into that. But I liked that we could take what was the Jedi at their worst in the prequels, right? Shed a new light on them that we would never have seen through the lens of the original series and be like, you know what? Those Jedi kind of jerks, kind of jerks, uh, kind of, kind of arrogant, kind of selfish, kind of really narrow minded. Uh, what the fuck? And the second movie of the the new trilogy the last jedi tried to to break that it's like you know what yes the jedi were were not great there's more to the force and being a hero than what your name is who your mommy is who your daddy is there's more than you know, the same recycled bad guy. You know, the problem with the new trilogy was they didn't have a plan. And and, and the, the contrast to this is the earlier Marvel stuff. Oh, my God. Imagine if they had had the same sort of market, like the, the oh, what, what would you call it, like planning team involved? Yeah, just, you know, you had your, your, your Kevin Feige's with the Marvel stuff. And, and don't get me wrong, like the, the, the current state of Marvel is just a shit show. And my biggest fear is that by doing new in Star Wars now, it's just going to turn into that. I disagree and, with you about the current state of Marvel, by the way. 
that's um, that, another yeah episode. that's that's it, it isn't what it was we can probably agree on that it's it's a pretty high high to try and continue or to try and beat right and, and don't get me wrong their, their success has put them in an impossible situation yeah. so so i get it i get it but it was very clear in that sequel trilogy that you had um J.J. Abrams doing his thing in the first movie, and you had Ryan Johnson doing his That's thing in the fair. second movie, and there was no, no plan. There wasn't even, like, I don't think there was any conversations about, like, oh. here's where we want to get to at the end of the trilogy. Help me paint in all of this stuff in between. It was just like, I'm going to undo everything that you did because I thought it was stupid. And I think actually subverting expectations there was the right move. Um, it, it wasn't done well. It wasn't executed no. well. Like the whole, oh, you thought Snoke was going to be a bad guy. Let's cut him in half. You know? Yeah. Uh, like you gotta, you gotta have, like, if you're going to do a trilogy, you've got to tie it together somehow. It very much reminds me of like, you hire a plumber to come in and do the plumbing. And the very first thing he says is the last guy didn't know what he was doing. I got to do everything over again. Yep. Right. And it's, this is a problem. Here's a funny thing, right? Is you look at a movie and it's like, it is, it's a billion dollar thing. Um, and it has so many parallels to what I do every day, which, and I, like, I'm tempted to do this myself sometimes is that you, you pick up, uh, someone else's job halfway through and you're like, I don't understand what they've done. It feels easier. I'm sure that you experience this, like writing computer code. Mm -hmm. It feels like it would be easier to throw it all out and start again, but it isn't. You, you have to try and figure out like, where did they get to? What were they working on? How are they working it? Okay, now I need to add to this, and that mm -hmm. that is something I think that they failed to do in the uh, but, second and third movie. Oh, absolutely, and that that excuse would make sense if, let's say, Sony Pictures did the first movie, and yeah, Paramount did the second movie, and then Disney did the third movie. But like, this is this is all in your own house that you didn't, especially when you had the blueprint there with the Marvel stuff already, that yeah. you didn't take the time to be like, look, here's what the here's what uh force awakens needs to do it needs to it needs to communicate that we get it that we we've learned the lessons that george didn't learn uh during the prequels that we have a better of understanding of what people love about star wars and let's get it back on the rails but from that point forward there needs to be a plan and there wasn't one and while you might not like what ryan johnston tried to do in the second movie or the execution, I think it was the right move to try and do it. The, 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 the subverting the exotic, uh, expectations, the, 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 take the Jedi and throw them away. Take the, the, the Skywalker name. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let's go in a new direction. Anybody can be a hero. Anybody can be a Jedi. Oh, look, there's a kid, you know, force grabbing a broom at the end of the movie. What's going to happen to him? I bet you he's going to be in the third movie. Womp, womp. Then J.J. Abrams comes in, does the third movie, and it's just an overcorrection to everything that was bad about Star Wars. Yeah. The, let's cram everything into this just so that we can have it in it. Remember this? We, we need to sell Poe toys. We need to sell, hey, remember this guy that used to be a... Uh, a stormtrooper, but now he's one of the heroes. Isn't that cool? Would you like to explore more about his character? Too fucking bad. We got laser fights to have and, and sky beams. And you thought the Death Star was bad. What if there were ships that were Death Stars and we had 90 million of those? And hey, do you remember the Emperor? Oh. Uh, if they one had, of the, if they one hadn't of the, brought the Emperor back, I think I could have forgiven him for all the rest. Yeah. One of the, the channels, uh, this isn't uh, a parting gift, but one of the channels Tanya and I watch to recap a lot of these nerdy shows and movies that we watch, Screen Crash, has a thing that's kind of became his own meme. He's selling merch for it now, but it just there's that one clip in that movie where Poe, Oscar Isaacs, just says, somehow Palpatine returned. <laughs> and that sums up the movie. Let's ignore the fact that the 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 reveal for that happened in a fucking video game. They they uh. revealed that in Fortnite, and then the 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 
opening crawl for that movie was like palpatine's returned okay uh, oh why God. how yeah i don't you know what i don't even need to know how um like if you had left it if you had left here's the here's the thing here would be a great rewrite of that what was the third one called by the way uh Rise of, uh, Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here's here is here is a great thing that could have happened in the third movie. The crawl opens with somehow Emperor, Emperor Palpatine has returned. Everyone's worried about Palpatine having returned. Everything is focused on Palpatine having returned. Turns out he didn't. It was just mm-hmm. somebody spreading a rumor and using him because the idea of Emperor Palpatine is huge, right? He's the boogeyman. You you can't. Um, you can't ignore that. You can't, you can't go, oh, well, you know, that's, that's probably not true. You have to go, oh my God, we have to react to that. And then imagine if it's not true. Imagine if it's, you know, some other bad guy, which you're now setting up to, you know, to sell your next 16 movies. Do you who's think that, using the, the sort of like a, him as a beard? Do you think that idea might've had legs and they might've rolled with it if the reaction to what they did with the Mandarin and Iron Man three didn't go so poorly. Um, maybe. And you know what? I loved that in Iron Man three. I I liked it too, but a lot of people hated it it. and it would have been, I guess it would have been good if it wasn't a character that everybody wanted to see done a certain way. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I don't know. They could have dredged up some other, some other like, bad guy but done the same thing you know the the actually it's just a beard and uh my name is trevor and i'm an actor (laughs) yeah i i I really did like it myself and i agree if they'd have done that with palpatine in the third movie that would have been great oh Oh, you know what would have been the ultimate reveal is the whole thing goes through and and you do the the whole oh no it's palpatine palpatine's back and it turns out that it was jar jar all along I would have been 110% on board for that. 110%. Part of me, and again, you know, that, that would have retconned the prequels mm-hmm. in a way mm-hmm. that... No. Nope, it, it doesn't. Well, no, I know. There's, there's enough in there that people have put together the ultimate theory of Darth Jar Jar. And I really, I think we actually talked about it on the show once in uh, a question where like, you know, what fan theories did you really, really want to come true? And I think that was the one of the ones we That's talked the about. one. Yeah. yeah. I would I would give up my left testicle yep. for that to be true. But that third movie just became such a you know what fuck you like to to oh, to yeah. Ryan Johnston where he's like subverting expectations and you know it isn't about whether you're a Skywalker or not. And then JJ Abrams comes in and it's like you know what Ryan fuck you. Not only is Ray going to be Palpatine's daughter somehow. Now now picture Spoilers. that happening. <laughs> yes, spoilers. It's Star Wars discussion. Come on guys. Not only is she Palpatine's daughter, but she's going to go by the name Skywalker at the end of it, whether she's related or not, because that, that, the that, name matters. That part of it, I was okay with, um, because like in universe, if you think about in in the Star Wars universe, in 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 that world, the name Skywalker carries an awful lot of weight, right? He was the guy who blew up the Death Star. You know, he was the guy who brought back the Jedi Order. Like he's a legend. So taking on his name is, is like taking on a mantle of power. It's, it's like, um, it's like, uh, signaling to the universe that you're taking responsibility for stuff. Mm-hmm. That part I'm okay with the Palpatine's daughter thing is like, what, like, what, what are you even doing? Yeah. Like, uh, like, uh, d- uh, you know, if you're going to, you had, you had a good bad guy already in Kylo Ren. Yes. Especially when there was Lean this, is that. he going to be, is he going to be good? Is he going to be bad? Can he be redeemed? Make it look like he's going to be redeemed and nope. That's, that's a redo of the Darth Vader arc that I was okay with. Like that. It's okay to redo that arc. That arc has legs. You can do mm-hmm. it again. Yeah. <sighs> But you got to give them the smoochies at the end because, you know, oh it's got to be a love story. Oh, stop it. It's, it's like one poetry. Of those... It rhymes. Oh, my God. It's one of those things that I have. I had a friend that I used to work with, uh, Pete. And I forget his last name. So if you're watching Pete, I'm, he's probably not. I don't imagine he's much into YouTube. 
Um, but he had this theory that uh, at the end of a movie, if they don't know how to end the movie, they go, love grenade. And it's basically like it hasn't you, you haven't uh, really foreshadowed it. You haven't done a setup for this. But at the end of it, two main characters just all of a sudden, boop, they're together. Happened with my Baldur's Gate characters. An hour into the game. <laughs> hey, we just had a big fight. Wanna fuck? <laughs> Basically. So, it's like a review for, remember Anaconda? <laughs> hey, look, a big snake. Let's have sex in the jungle. <laughs> and that's the movie. You can, you can avoid yeah. watching Anaconda now. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So anyway. I, I hated the way the the sequel movies ended up. I, I did but too. Then... Here's the here's the funny thing though is that the the movies themselves would have been just fine. The problem that happened was all of the people who were making the movies fighting with each, with each other about how they were going to make the movie. Somebody with a big set of boots needed to come in, stomp all over it, and say, "No, this person is in charge of the creative nature of the movies. Carry on." Yeah, they just uh, they, and this goes back to part of why I I I didn't, and you know I'm 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 looking at this through the lens of, of seeing the full trilogy now. In doing the Force Awakens the way they did, they didn't have a vision before they started. Their vision was, let's do, do a New again. Hope again, and then we'll figure it out. And they didn't figure it out. Yeah. You know what I would really have liked to have seen? And this is something that I wanted to, to see. And I was very, very excited to hear the name in Ahsoka is if they had done the Timothy Zahn trilogy that came out after the original uh, four, five and six mm -hmm. uh, with Admiral Grand Admiral Thrawn and Luke Skywalker and Mara mm -hmm. Jade. Uh, so Thrawn played a significant part. Like he's canon character. He was brought in in Rebels. And Good. the character is reasonably faithful to the Legends material, the, the Expanded Universe books. Uh, now, I haven't read all of them. Uh, and the ones that I read, again, it was m a million years ago. Yeah. But back when you were young. That character and that direction for Star Wars was, hey, let's do something new. Yes. Right? And they've wisely, I think, chosen to lean into, hey, somebody already tried to do something new here, and it was extremely well-received by the small niche audience. Let's lean on that. Yes. And, and super wise, I think. But my fear is that the new is also going to be too complicated. That's my beef with the, the, the current phase marble stuff. It's just, what's going on? I've watched all 17 movies and 13 shows. I've consumed 17,000 minutes of Marvel material, and I just, I don't know. It's difficult. Like, there's a... a, a delicate dance you have to do between mm -hmm. all of this stuff is interconnected but all of it also stands on its own like you have to be able to watch a movie or a tv show or whatever and enjoy it for itself mm -hmm. but also if you've watched all the rest of it go hey, oh hey i recognize that thing yeah. and that's that's something that like you, you talk about member berries right mm -hmm. where you just you throw out ahsoka for example like in episode episode one or two, whatever, one of them. We watch them back to back, so they may as well be one, one episode. Um, you know, X-Wings go flying by. And it's like, mm -hmm. that's how you do a member berry. It's not, hey, here's X-Wings. We're going to tell you about X-Wings. You're going to show you the schematics for X-Wings. We're going to talk about X-Wings. No, X-Wings exist. They're a nostalgic thing for someone of my age to have to see, mm -hmm. and there they went flying by. Awesome. It's, it's a transition from one scene to another. Perfect way to do that kind of thing. You could do all of that, at, like all of the connective stuff in that kind of uh, context where it ha like you, you see something that you recognize from all of the other content that you've seen or watched or heard or read or whatever and go, oh, hey, I see that this is connected, 
But if you don't get it, the show is still fine. And they, they did that. They tried it, and it was the best Star Wars we've seen since Return of... Uh, no, I would even say since Empire. And that was the first season of Mandalorian. It was really good. And all of that stuff was subtle. And, and, and here's why I have very little hope for where Star Wars will go. While I'm glad to see something new, you know what I don't need to see? Star Wars Avengers. I don't need it to all lead up to a big team-up movie that's got everybody no. in it. Uh, and I know it's hard to step back into a small story. Mandalorian Season 1 did it extremely well. Mandalorian Season 2, okay. It probably Boba, didn't need Luke Boba at Fett, the end. Terrible. Book of Boba Fett, like, why give him his own show when, like, you're just going to have the best parts of it be Mandalorian episodes that should have been how you kick off season three of Mando. Yeah. You know, like season three of Mando, again, going off the rails. And I, I don't know if this is like studio interference, Kathleen Kennedy, or whether, again, they just, they've, they've lost the plot. All of that stuff that happened on Coruscant with the, the you know, trying to portray the, the New Republic is, as incompetent and showing all of these things that you can clearly see are, ooh, that's going to be the rise of the First Order. We need to explain this thing that we didn't, didn't provide any context for in those new movies. We need to retroactively make those movies better instead of focusing on the actual future. So let's, let's focus on cloning. Let's focus on Coruscant and the, the First Order rising up under their nose. And you know what? There could have been a show that was dedicated to that, and I would have loved it. I didn't need that in Mando season three. I haven't watched Mandalorian season three. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know Mandalorian had a season three. Oh, so I'm so uh, sorry. It, I'll I'll be turning in my nerd card at the end of the episode. Um, there's just so much. There's so much content to consume, and this goes back to again the idea that like when Star Wars was in theaters, like you didn't go to the theater and watch anything else. I remember uh, I was I was uh, visiting my dad for the summer in Toronto when Empire came out, um, and this was you know, oh my God, there was like t- the population of Toronto was like under a million people or something. It was ridiculous, uh, and we went to a theater to watch Return of the Jedi, and it was literally the only thing playing. They had three screens and they were playing Return of the Jedi, and all three of them. Like now you go to a movie and there's like 17 screens and there's like 21 different movies showing depending on what time you go and you've got 24 seven streaming. And this is not a, not a complaint so much, but it is like when you have too much, right? Like imagine eating too much pudding. If you have pudding once a week, it's delicious. If you have pudding like five times a day, you're eventually going to get sick of pudding, even though pudding is awesome. Now, what kind of pudding are we talking here? Oh, it doesn't matter. It literally it, it doesn't does matter. matter. Chocolate pudding. Okay. Yeah, no, I could eat that every day. I right, try it. Seriously, try it and eat it like five times a day, every day. Eventually you'll go, I don't ever want to see chocolate pudding again. But my point is is that like we're oversaturated right. oversaturated with content. We have so much. We have YouTube, which has mm-hmm. there is more material getting uploaded to youtube every day than you can watch in a year Mm -hmm. now granted most of it is like this crap that you don't actually want to watch but like there's just so much you can't keep up with all of it did you watch andor yes and i loved it i absolutely loved it because it was different it was it was a very small and focused story there was a bunch of stuff that happened that you understood what was happening, but you didn't really understand why they left mystery. And that's important. Mm-hmm. You Even can though we know of... where it's going. Like we know sort of yeah. the yeah. ultimate end result. Uh, Rogue one as a movie. I loved Rogue one as a movie. I didn't hate solo, but I kind of hated it. I, I didn't mind solo. I, I loved what they did with Lando Calrissian as a character in that movie. Oh, um, see, I, I, shush. Yeah, I loved it. it. Just because it was different, because it was a completely different take on the character. Um, and if you think about, if you think about it, it's the same character from a different perspective. Then it's less jarring. 
right? Imagine it, like it's like the the three blind men trying to figure out an elephant. One of them thinks it's a snake. One of them thinks it's a tree, and the other one thinks it's uh, like a yeah. A, see, a it's funny because like everybody was worried about oh, how can you have somebody other than Harrison Ford playing on solo? And then you know, as they were in production, there was like rumors that oh, this they're they're giving this actor acting lessons halfway through the production, and you know it's like this is gonna be terrible. And we watched this movie, and I was like, you know what? It's fine. As a young Han Solo, I thought he was perfectly fine. Yep. I found uh, Donald Glover to, to, like, that was a cartoon character version of Lando. It and was. I hated it. I was I fine. I hated it. I, I, do not, I do not want a Lando movie with, with that character, right? Yeah. That would be too much. But he's, he's supposed to be um, spice. He's supposed to be flavor, right? He's supposed to be extra, and he's supposed to be over the top. And he's supposed to be in small doses. And, and in that maybe way, it was, I think it works. You know, it was the 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 large dose that may have been the problem. It just it came like it was a parody to me. It, it just uh, a little bit, a little bit. He was over yeah. the top. But going back to Rogue One, I didn't really like Rogue One. I found here's the and here's the funny thing. I found that the protagonist. I've forgotten her name. Oh my god. Um, whatever her whatever yeah, yeah. her name is it doesn't matter it's not important protagonist girl um i found her completely unremarkable and uninspiring right and i think the actress did a perfectly fine job i think she was she was perfectly fine uh but i the character was just this is meh the characters that exist around her i found a little bit more compelling yeah, and I don't know if it was a conscious choice to, I mean, hey, you don't want to be too invested in these characters because, spoiler alert, they're all going to die. Dies. Yeah. Uh, if there was some of that or, you know, it was not every every hero does heroic things and not every hero is likable and it is the the result of their actions more than you know, their personality or whatever that matters at the end of the day. You know, like what? even, you know, as much as I loved Andor, like Cassian Andor in, in the oh, one ass. movie was just I, the, my least favorite part of it. But Here's... I was okay with it. You know, you know who was an ass? Han fucking Solo. Oh, yeah. There was nothing really aside that it was Harrison for him. And he was, you know, he had all that riz. Like he was dripping. Oh, so much. Yeah. Dripping the charisma. like that's the character like it was a, it was a one-dimensional character like it's if, no surprise that harrison ford did not want to play that character anymore ever it was but he was fine doing indie indies you know 1.5 dimensions but like <laughs> yeah you know he, he was okay doing indie over and over again uh, i wish he would stop doing indie honestly i really wish he would just stop please stop doing indiana jones mr mr ford the first three movies were great should have stopped yeah like hand it off like the handoff to to paper bag boy i was okay with that um here's here's an interesting thing that sort of uh came to mind as you were talking about uh heroes and, and how they they i think that heroes only exist retroactively because if you if you think about it most people who do things that we then say are heroic are just doing what they think was right at the time Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong, and sometimes they die. Um, very few people who are who I would describe as actually heroic do things that they consider heroic at the time. Mm -hmm. Like if they actually thought something was heroic at the time, they probably wouldn't do it. So, and that's that's what you know. I don't mind looking at Rogue One specifically. Like it, it, it really did break with the hero's journey at a time when I think the, the movies really needed to break away from the hero's journey. That might actually be what I don't like about it. Yeah. Um, and, and the reason I say that is because, and I, I think I might've mentioned this before. I was like, I, I enjoyed the oceans 11 movie, the remake that with, mm -hmm. um, George Clooney and all those, yep. was it yeah, George yeah. Clooney? Yeah. George Clooney, Brad Pitt. Matt Damon, yeah. Like everybody, everybody. Um, because I, I went back and tried to, cause I enjoyed that. 
And then I went back and tried to watch the original Ocean's Eleven. Have you ever seen it? Long, long, long time ago. I couldn't watch it. And the reason that I couldn't watch it wasn't that it wasn't a lack of, of talent on screen. Like there was lots of talent on screen. It's just the rhythm of making movies, the rhythm of telling stories has changed. And my mm -hmm. brain has been trained that when the rhythm, when you don't hit the formula, my brain goes, this, this movie is no good. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Rogue's, Rogue One changed the rhythm a little bit. Yeah. And, and it just, it, it didn't, it, nothing in it was bad, but something about it just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. That was so, it. So, uh, a semi related question to that. Did you watch the Suicide Squad movies? Yes. Um, and did you like either one of them? I liked them both, but I recognize that there are problems with both of them. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I, I like the second one a little better because oh, yeah. it was a yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, but I like the first one. And I think the only reason the really the only reason that I like the first one is because Harley Quinn and oh my, I've forgotten the actress's mm -hmm. name. Margot Robbie. Margot Robbie is just, it, she's so perfect. Oh, like yeah, she absolutely. is Harley Quinn. Like there is no one will ever play Harley Quinn again and do it right. Never. Speaking of, uh, Drawing a blank on her name all of a sudden. Uh, the original Harley Quinn actress that did the voice work in the animated series passed away this week. Rest in peace. Um, we've now lost both Batman and probably the best Batman. And the OG Harley Quinn is amazing as, as Margot Robbie is. And that's a shame. Yes, we are getting to the age where many of the uh, remarkable people of our youth are. Yeah, it kind of sucks. Sh shuffling off. Okay, back to the, the Suicide Squad movies. Would you have liked those movies if they weren't funny? <sighs> Probably not. Then that's why you didn't but, like Rogue One. Um, Maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, I, like, there were parts of Rogue One that I liked. Just the overall... I think the only thing... The only part... It's been a while since I've watched it. All right. So I, I, I left the, the movie with a bad taste in my mouth. And I think the only part of it that I really disliked was sort of the very final scene slash act, right? Where they're actually assaulting the, the planet. Um, and part of it was because it, it felt like, okay, we have to shoehorn in this giant battle. It's like, what, what are you doing? This is just, this is the wrong way to do this. Mm. I mean, they wanted to make a war movie. Like they, they were, they were trying to do a thing, you know, a Star yeah. Wars war movie. and and. I guess we could argue about whether or not that was required to achieve that or not. Uh, my hot take is actually like at the time I I've watched it. And now years and years later, I like rogue one better than return of the Jedi. I put it number Oof. three on my list of star Wars movies. Oh, wow. Empire, wow. a new hope. Rogue one. Wow. Mando season two would leapfrog it if I were counting TV or season one would leapfrog it if I were counting yeah. TV shows and or would definitely leapfrog it. But um, I actually really like the Kenobi's first series, first season as well. Mostly, mostly just because I, I, I have a man crush on you and McGregor. Hey, he's great. He's great. He was definitely the he's Obi -Wan. part of that. Yeah. I think my beef. Did you play the Jedi Fallen Order game? No, I didn't. Mm. It's canon material, as is the the new game Jedi Survivor. And I haven't played it yet, but I think both games probably in the grand scheme of things are going to be important post Ahsoka. I got a, I got a feeling that there, there's going to be some related shit going on there. But there's so many things that are tie ins for video games now. It's yeah. like we're, we're getting we're getting very close to the point where we don't have separate media. My beef with the, the Kenobi series was that a significant portion of it, like literally scene for scene, was just rehashed from that video game. Oh, yeah, that would be disappointing. Yeah. Like it was, you know, and I don't know if it was intentional, like the whole having a significant uh, Sith Inquisitor, uh, third sister versus seventh sister, fifth sister. Anyway, 
uh, which started off as like, oh, this is basically the same character. And then there's a whole segment of, of the video game where you infiltrate the the Inquisitor base, that, that sort of thing on Mustafar that's in the water. And it plays out a little bit differently, but you actually, you have your fight in the video game with uh, the Inquisitor and then Darth Vader shows up and he just starts wrecking shit. Ooh. And then there's this scene in the video game as you're going down this hallway where the glass gets broken and all the water starts rushing in. And this is one of the Darth Vader badass moments where you realize like this whole part of the video game is just, holy God, this guy is next level. Just the power that he has, the ability to just like, he's literally just throwing parts of buildings at you at this point. And the the underwater tunnel glass thing shatters and all this water comes in and he just, he stops Aquaman. it, right? But that's he just the, Aquaman's it. Yeah, and that's that's where he everybody else manages to escape barely alive. And they they recreated almost that entire experience, except the way it played out in that tunnel as they escaped the water was just a little bit different. But like visually speaking, it was it was identical. It was like not just beat for beat, but like scene for scene. Like you could have storyboarded it and recycled the storyboard. I wonder if they recycled some of the digital assets and just reskinned them. Yeah. Um, I I didn't like the shoehorning of Leia in the movie. Had nothing to do with the the actress that played her. I thought it was was cool. I just thought it was crazy unnecessary. Almost always. Yeah. Um, I would have. Liked... Larry's should not have speaking parts. Yeah. Uh, you know I. Here's what I'll say about Kenobi. There's absolutely no way, based on my head canon, right? Like you imagine, oh, what would it be like if, you know, Vader and, and Obi-Wan went at it again after Vader became Vader, but before they were old men, you know, slowly whacking each other with sticks for two seconds before old man Ben's like, you know what? I'm piecing out. I'm just going to disappear. I'm becoming a force ghost. Yeah. Strike me down. More powerful. Become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Well, apparently he could imagine it because like, you know, two movies later, he's a force ghost. And not only a force ghost, but a younger force ghost eventually. (laughs) Well, you know, he is the chosen one. (laughs) Uh, but yeah i I mean i generally i was okay with kenobi um a lot of the the stuff with the inquisitors i just didn't care it's popcorn and yeah that's the thing is that we i mean this is kind of the point of the whole discussion but i mean like we overanalyze things to the point where like it's ridiculous like have some popcorn enjoy it did you did you enjoy yourself and did you like the popcorn yeah i Half of it, I would say yes. The other half, yeah. I'm just like, no, nah, this is this is trash. Um, it would be, but yeah, if it was something that you're rehashing from previous, then I think it would. Well, be and good. it was like, you know, that would have been if I hadn't played that game. Some of the better parts, maybe, but the other part of it, just okay, I get the idea because they they set the precedent with with Luke doing it on his little puffin planet that he's on. And oh, yeah. so he's cut himself off from the force. And, you know, I get that maybe he's done that. But. Like. He got to be Obi-Wan Kenobi for 20 minutes of the last episode. Like what I didn't need to see is a movie showing me how you and McGregor could become Alec Guinness. Yeah, it would have been nice if they had done. I would really love to see, because one of the things that the uh, Expanded Universe Now Legends did really well with a whole bunch of books uh, was, here are these characters in a different time and a different place doing different things. Still being those characters, but in different adventures. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the things I wanted to bring up is that there was a... uh, After the Thrawn books, after the Timothy Zahn series with, with Grand Admiral Thrawn, there was... Uh, Luke and Mara Jade got married, had kids. Han and Luke got married, had kids. 
that was one of my big beefs actually with the, the new movies is that Han they had to do the Han and Leia get back together again mm-hmm. thing. So um, they should they should have just been married. Um, speaking of that of the- series specifically, um, I think they're going to, and I, and I don't think it's going to come off well with uh, the Ahsoka series. The whole idea of Luke infiltrating the Sith. He's going to go and he's going to be the apprentice of the Emperor's clone in the, the Legends material, right? Oh, where, where yeah. Where Luke falls to the dark side. I think they're doing that in Ahsoka with another character that, like, was the worst part of Rebels, the the Ezra character, the, the one that's missing that they oh, sort of showed. Yeah. yeah. I have a feeling. Now, it's almost too obvious the way they're doing it, so I'm probably wrong. But my gut tells me that... Uh, person that fought ahsoka in the second episode that was in the inquisitor uniform with the mask mm-hmm. that that's going to turn out to be ezra yeah i wondered who that was um in any case so after after uh the thrawn is is defeated uh luke and mara have kids han and leia have kids um they do this thing where it takes a hard left turn and a invasion force of some kind of out of the galaxy aliens called the Yuzan Vong mm-hmm. attack. And I only vaguely remember it, but I remember like the, the, it, I think the series is called the young Jedi or something. Yeah. Um, and they, they fight off the aliens and stuff. Those were really, really good. Um, you, you talked about uh, gray Jedi. Um, and I'm, I'm just keeping an eye on the time here. Cause this we're, we're, <laughs> we're, eh, we're, we're, we're late. Yeah. Whatever. Um, there was a there was one written by God, I can't remember his name, but it was called I Comma Jedi. Mm-hmm. Um, where it was really weird because it almost felt like self insert fan fiction, mm-hmm. right? I'm a Jedi and I'm really powerful. I'm more powerful than Luke Skywalker, but I don't have I don't I'm, I'm not an actual Jedi. I don't mm-hmm. I don't subscribe to these things. And then Luke shows up and he's like, Yeah, you know, like I totally know Luke Skywalker and I'm I'm totally cool with it. It was, I mean, it was a well-written book. It was fun, yeah. but it was really like the tone of it was really. Weird. And I, and I think they're going to borrow from the Yuzhong Vong stuff. Um, I hope so. Not, uh, I mean, I don't, nobody knows for sure. Uh, again, uh, again, not a, a parting gift, but screen crush has speculated on a bunch of this stuff. Um, they're probably going to borrow from the ideas of that replace the race like the whole thing with the yuzhong vong if i remember was that they just abhorred any sort of technology and and there was was... technology and like that probably wouldn't fly i think what they're going to do is maybe lean on there's there's this idea of a precursor race and the name is uh escaping me that comes up in the jedi fallen order video game where you're actually exploring some of these ruins and I'm going to speculate there's probably some ties between them and the Night Sisters, of which uh, Morgan Elspeth, that's the name of that character, that uh, the Night Sister that she fought in Mandalorian. I couldn't remember the name earlier. They're probably going to tie the Night Sisters to this precursor race at some point. And, you know, they're, they're doing something about this, you know, in a galaxy far, far away, but not that galaxy, the other one. Oh, the farther, farther away galaxy. Yeah. yeah. You know, it'd be great. They will never do this. There is, um, the Witcher did this in the the books. And there's actually Easter eggs in cyberpunk for it. The idea that Siri, when she was jumping from world to world, she actually jumped to our world and spent some time there. Mm. Wouldn't it be cool? They'll never do it. Because, I mean, it'd be terrible. They'd, they'd, They'd never be able to execute it. If where Thrawn ended up was our galaxy. <laughs> oh my God, that would be awesome. It would be Even like if that it's battle, like far future battle, kind of version of our galaxy or whatever, but yeah. It'd be like Battlestar Galactica 1984 where they come to LA. Yeah. <laughs> At some point we have to do an episode where we talk about all of the um, old uh ancillary star wars stuff that i'm not sure if they've actually made a uh a statement on like the droids cartoon uh the ewoks cartoon do you remember the two ewok movies caravan of courage and 
just can't remember the crash, other. crash. I can't remember the other one. Uh, but there were two Ewok movies. Yeah. Um, that they probably flew under the radar when they were going, "Hey, all of that stuff that's not canon anymore," and they probably didn't make a statement about that. So those would be worth. You know what? If if we come up for a visit and we'll watch the two Ewok movies as a group, that would be great. Yeah, we had at They're least terrible. the one, the main one, our kids watched over and over and over again growing up. Um, I hate Ewoks, honestly. Like, I to me that was like Return of the Jedi it's was fine. one step short of Jar Jar for me. That's why I put like fine. Rogue One above it. It's it's fine. They they decided at that point. You know what? We need to skew this thing towards kids. Yeah, well, the kids loved it. Yeah. Why Why just have the parents come when they can bring their kids to? We'll make more money that way. Yeah, well, I mean, we're selling toys. Look at the toys we're selling. Oh, my God, the toy tie-ins. Yeah. Um, yeah, we need to talk about the prequels a little bit more, too, because I, I want to give them a little bit more of a sober look. I think I want to re-watch them, though, before I talk about them very much. Well, we've been doing book report stuff. We could Start do some movie, movie review report. stuff where we we watch them fresh and and we talk about it. Well, yeah, there's a there's a ton of movies that I would love to watch. We started watching the Alien movies again. We watched uh, Alien last week. I think we're probably going to watch Aliens this weekend. Which I, I I don't know if we've mentioned this before, but Aliens is damn near the perfect movie. Damn near. Yep. Yeah. And then it all went wrong. Yeah. Well, hey, Ian, uh, Ian has another question for us. We should answer it. You've got mail. A general book question. How many pages or chapters do you read before deciding to give up on a particular book? This past March, I took a book on vacation with me and got 20 pages into it before leaving it beside the pool for someone else to pick up and maybe enjoy. In retrospect, I feel like I gave up too early, but the author was painfully arrogant. Oh, my. Um, well, the cop-out answer is it depends. Because um, there's two things that I can possibly, I think we may, have, I may have mentioned this before. There are two things that I can potentially enjoy about an author's work. There are, there, there have been some authors that I have read that I, I can, t I persevered through the book because the story, the story did not hook me. I was not interested in the story or the characters or anything about it. But the way that the author put words together one after the other was artful. Um, there have been a large number of books that I have read because the story and the characters and the ideas were compelling, but the way that they actually described it was awful. Um, Piers Anthony is a, a great example of that. I really enjoy his Xanth books, but oh my God, are they painfully written. Uh, so it, it depends on the book. Like if, if there's a story that's even remotely interesting and the, the word craft is good, I mean, I'll read it all the way through. Uh, but I can generally tell about the word craft in the first couple of paragraphs, right? You, you have, I, I forget what it was. Cause I, I took a bunch of writing courses back in, in high school. Cause I, I had pretensions at one point of being an author and you have, three or four sentences or at least this time because there was there were people who actually would would go through the pulp and read you've got a paragraph maybe two before someone either goes all right this is worth reading more or i'm putting it aside um so i can tell in the first couple of paragraphs if it's going to be well enough written for me to try and get into the story um you've got maybe a chapter for the story to hook me Maybe that's it. Not much. Yeah, my answer varies. It certainly depends on your investment in it. And what I mean by that is, uh, well, look at the, the second book, for instance, of uh, the King Killer Chronicles that we've been in, The Wise Man's Fear. I griped about that book a lot. Now, it was okay. Like, I'd, I probably should have spent more time focusing on the positive, but 
I was invested, so I was willing to to sit through the, the the pain and 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 stuff I didn't like because there's nuggets of stuff that I want there. And you can be invested in a few different ways. One is you're invested in the material. Uh, another is that you're socially invested, like. You're going to have water cooler discussion about this, or you're going to start a podcast to talk about this kind of shit. Like <laughs> there's other reasons for reading something, you know, you got to get enjoyment somewhere out of it. If there isn't enjoyment in the material of itself, then you have to find the enjoyment in the meta, the discussion around it, or, or pulling the nuggets out of, you know, something that you, you, you're fleshing out a greater story that you're passionate about. Absent any of that, Man, I, I can literally stand in front of a mirror and watch myself get older. Life is way too fucking short to be worried about, you know, something that you just don't give a shit about. If you've got no reason to like it and your initial reaction to it is that it just isn't for you, fuck it. Now, what I would say is maybe don't leave it beside a pool. Uh, chances are that's just going to get trashed or, or end up in a lost and found bin and, and thrown out at some point maybe pocket it there's a lot of those um book exchanges it's like the the little penny containers that you used to find in in like uh leave leave a book take a book yeah yeah leave a book take a book kind of thing like it's worth you know hanging on to it until you can find one of those you got a better chance of the book finding a new home finding somebody else's eyes that might find enjoyment in it it's but, important uh, to note as well that a, a book that you don't enjoy doesn't mean it's a bad book. It just means that it's not a book for you. Yeah, it's not a book for you, you know, and and not going to shit on people that do enjoy stuff that I don't. Can't yuck somebody else's yum, but life's too short to waste time with something you either A, are not invested in, or B, are not getting value out of. I have a question for you. Hmm. Have you ever read and enjoyed a romance novel uh well i just read wise man's fear does that count <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure that that exactly counts no no uh, um uh, i haven't and it's probably something that we should do at some point like I, old school I, harlequin romance kind of stuff i I, I, full confession, I, at one point, when I was a kid, we've talked about this before. When I was a kid, I mean, I, I, I read, oh God, probably a couple of thousand pages worth of fiction a week. I, I just ran out of stuff to read. And there was, there was a bodice ripper just hanging around somewhere someone had read or someone had, had, had bought. It was just lying around. So I read it and it was actually entertaining. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as to say that it was art because it wasn't. Um, but whoever it was that wrote it, uh, and, and like it, I'm sure it runs the gamut, right? Because there's 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 bad and there's good. Um, whoever whoever actually wrote it was a wordsmith of some talent. Mm -hmm. There were characters who were compelling. There was a story that I was interested to find out what happens next. Um, I'm not sure that it's nerdy, but I, I mean I have I. So, so let me ask you a question. Yep. Did you just enjoy the book or did you enjoy the meta around the book? Your own meta analyzing, this is a romance book. These are the tropes. Like, did you just enjoy I, it straight? I, I just enjoyed it straight. I, yeah. I mean, I was, I was probably 12 or 13 years old at the time. Like I, I was vaguely aware that romance and sex was a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and to be honest, like it was very much a PG 13 romance novel. Like there was no, you know, um, graphic content. There was, there was definitely the description of these two people are going into a bedroom now to have sex, but there wasn't a graphic depiction of they're having, it's like they go into the bedroom and now, now they're lovers, right? Like, you know, what's yeah. happening. I don't know if I'd be able to get into that because it, it it's like watching bad movies. It's like best of the worst, right? For me, I would enjoy the meta around it. And I know this is the worst possible example to reference because it's not the same. But my wife tried to get into the Fifty Shades books and they're, oh they're terrible. But aside from being terrible, they, they had a lot of the same tendencies that a lot of those books do especially the ones that are trying to be a little bit 
like coy about stuff is like word choices to describe things like <laughs> that i think after the 97th time in the first three chapters that somebody referred to their genitals as my sex or her sex or you know like as a noun describing a physical part of your body she tuned out she's like i'm so fucking done this is the most childish oh, shit yeah. i've ever read it is it is very simplistic Ooh, but you touched here's... my sex sir you know what what, what yeah do you, what do you there's... mean when you say that word well, you keep using that word i do not think it means what you think it means um okay so i would like to i would like to clarify that is not a romance novel that is just porn no i know well i mean not even like it's <laughs> it's, I, it's softcore porn it's I, terrible porn <laughs> for my sister actually it was my sister's birthday today so the timing of this is perfect I happy birthday her, shane's sister her 13th ish birthday maybe maybe her 14th she got big into sailor moon okay. when it was first being aired over here like we didn't have a lot of anime it was one of the early ones that was very much yeah. aimed at kids teenage girls largely and this was the very early days of the internet and uh -oh. i found and dug up for her thousands and thousands of pages of essentially sailor moon fanfic printed it off i went through like my own money for like two or three like ink cartridges and this shitty like bubble jet printer printed off just pages and pages and pages of fanfic put it in a binder for her so she had more sailor moon stuff to read now i made sure it was like not completely inappropriate fanfic it was more the ooh, let's explore the the you know was darian uh, tuxedo mask <laughs> whatever sorry. the I'm, the I'm romance not... between him and sailor moon and, and you know it didn't it didn't cross any lines but that was better romance literature than anything yes 50 shades bullshit no. twilight fanfic rebranded no. ever no. wanted to be F like, 50 shades is very much uh a sort of i'm going to hop on the coattails of this this popular thing and go do a, a thing there was and there was a, a famous uh author she wrote i don't know like a couple of hundred things mm -hmm. um and and she actually had some some reasonably good like there's stories about people and they they resonate like real people right those are good books uh, or or good stories to to read. I mean, they're simple. They're they're mental pablum. They're not complicated. They're not exploring deep themes. It's you know, here's a person who goes to work every day, and here's a person who goes to work every day, and they somehow meet, and and it works. It, it it's very much like um like four weddings and a funeral, right? Those kinds of stories where the story is very much focused on who are these people and how how do they relate to each other and, and what is their relationship to each other. Right. So those kinds of stories are are potentially interesting. Yeah. We we would have to vet any particular romance novel that we're gonna do a, a book report on. So pre parting gift, parting gift. Um have you watched the Sandra Bullock movie? Uh recently came out with, with her and Channing Tatum. Uh the Lost City. No. Oh. The basic setup for it, and this isn't spoilers, she is like an adult romance, like a Harlequin romance style author. And he is the cover model for her books, modeling, you know, a particular character. Okay. And they, they you know, hijinks ensue. They end up on like a real life kind of adventure. It is one of the most charming movies I've seen in years like for that kind of movie uh be it a you know rom-com or, or like a date movie kind of thing mm -hmm. uh the lost city came out last year it is absolutely worth the watch um you Writing know that it, down. It, it um it obviously plays plays on the meta you know it'd be like reading one of these books 
knowing that it's not a book that's for you and and getting a kick out of you know its tropes and stuff like that it does all of that but underneath it all is just a like a fantastic rom-com it's it's just wonderful well-made rom-com rom-coms are are entertaining and interesting to watch poorly made ones Mm -hmm. painful i'm gonna get into my official parting gift and i show you how deep the rabbit hole goes anybody want a peanut so we've talked about uh smarter every day as a youtube channel before and uh, we've talked about destin uh in depth i learned just this past week by listening to another podcast that he has a podcast that i didn't know about what called no dumb questions and it is very much probably i've only listened to a few episodes at this point but it's very much just a, a two guys uh talking about random shit podcast imagine this but like with talented smart charismatic people <laughs> oh 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 no we've been shown up yeah you know and sometimes you're talking about what's interesting about this though is uh you got destin who is himself like you know sort of an educational nerd he's a uh, rocket engineering scientist. background like he's he's a super smart dude but like a great communicator the other guy, uh, Matt Whitman, is a like he has a, a, a ten minute Bible stories or something like 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 he's ten minute those, physics. No, 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 ten minutes. Oh. It's like a like a, a religious thing, analyzing the Bible. Oh. Like he's very okay. very Christian. His story is that you know he believed in God and then he didn't and then he did and like he's a, a humanities guy. Like seems to be well educated. He's one of the smoothest talking guys I've ever heard. Oh. And the way he talks about like religious stuff, which is very like, it's odd for me to be interested in this. Like I'm, I am very, very, uh, I'm as, as big of an atheist as they come. I, I find the whole faith thing a little bit amusing. It's also led to a bit of an existential crisis because, like you know, getting old and and uh, approaching that time when you know you're not going to be around a lot longer. And having zero belief in any sort of like life after death is kind of scary, but that's a whole separate topic. But the, this Matt Whitman guy uh, is just, I, I, even like they were the episode that I was listening to while I was grocery shopping the other day, they were, they were going over cause the whole thing kicked off with like a riddle puzzle thing that they had to figure out. And then there were, they were talking about the, samson's puzzle thing from the bible with the whole like honey in the carcass of a a lion thing but they just told samson's kind of story in a in a like hilarious way like they were poking fun of it like he's he's a christian and he you know he's talking about these stories almost like you would look at a like a history story and try and ring truth for it or, or find meaning but like it's the kind of thing where he's talking about Bible and he refers to, you know, Samson going into his wife's room and he, you know, he calls it uh, her, her sexuary. And then, <laughs> and then you listen to him and Destin doing that for like 45 seconds, just trying to breathe. There's no words. There's no. <laughs> Oh my God! I have a new I have a new name for our bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, tangent. We when we moved in here, we named all of the rooms in our house. Um. So we have like the rumpus room, and there's a tea palace upstairs, which is like you know two feet by two feet with two chairs in it. But yeah, sanctuary. That's brilliant. Oh, and it was funny, and 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 it was hilarious because like I'm in Walmart. I got my earbuds in. And I and I try not to react to the stuff that I'm listening to. And I've got just the biggest, dumbest grin on my face. And I'm like in the I'm walking through the main aisle right by the checkouts at this point, right? Like I'm going from like pet food to grocery. And people are looking at me and I'm trying not to laugh. And I, I've got tears running down my eyes at this point, just listening to these guys do what you're doing now until they couldn't breathe. <laughs> oh my 
good. That's brilliant. If you if you want to listen to that episode specifically, it's the most recent episode, uh, episode one sixty three. How did he die? Um, they're not crazy long episodes, but it, you know, it's just two charismatic dudes from from differing sort of backgrounds and viewpoints about stuff, just hanging out and talking and. It's it's magic, man. I've like I've just done like two and a half episodes, and I'm I'm hooked. Religion or no religion, right? Like it's not going to convert me, but it's so fascinating. Uh, I love it. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, Sexuary. It's been, a, it's been a while since I've had a laugh like that. Thank you. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 well, I think that's it for me, man. I think we're done. It's been good hanging out with you. Indeed. We'll do it again in like three or four days. Sexuary. <laughs> uh, it might be the alcohol, but I think that's legitimately funny. <laughs> <laughs>